A very good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so uh, we will start lecture in five minutes. Uh, our host uh, Kaustuk sir is also there. So uh, very good evening. Very good evening to all of you. I welcome you all to this uh, session of miscellaneous insurance uh, for the candidates appearing for this promotional exam. Uh, Kaustub sir is a person who doesn't require any introduction. 
Kaustub sir is very senior person in our industry. Uh, he is uh, handling. Uh, uh, he is uh, presently is working as a divisional manager uh, with MRO Five Mumbai. Uh, he is the only faculty in last five to six year who is who has uh, who has been continuously taking miscellaneous lecture. In other subject, the faculties have changed, but in miscellaneous, Kaustub is the only is uh, Kaustub sir is the only faculty who has been continuously uh, giving lectures lectures in miscellaneous. He has a vast experience. In uh, Mr. Nis department, he is handling claims in his divisional office, so uh, he can uh, tell you the theoretical part as well as practical part. Also, his a uh, lecture will ex mostly exam oriented, so you can make most of use of it. So I will not take much of uh, Kaushik's time because uh, Mr. Nis is also one of the simplest but very important topic. So I hand over to Kaushik sir. Kaushik sir, you can start uh, your lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anil sir. Uh, today we are uh, doing miscellaneous uh, lecture and my my sound is audible or it is echo yes sir, yes it is audible it is audible no? it is audible okay. sir thank you uh, anil and now we will start our miscellaneous lecture i will share a ppt Okay, the screen is visible to you, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we'll start with miscellaneous insurance. Uh, uh, now, before starting miscellaneous insurance, you are all acquainted with all the uh, examination point of view, how many subjects, and uh, how to appear for the exam. The miscellaneous insurance is a very vast insurance. And in that, there are basically major three types of general insurance. First is fire, other is marine, and rest of all comes under miscellaneous insurance. In miscellaneous insurance, there are various products, where are, there are various subjects, what we can learn, but we are having short time. So what we will do, which are the important actually products or the subjects that we'll deal in our lecture. To start with miscellaneous insurance, uh, there is uh, 12 products. There are 12 products in front of you, right from personal accident, burglary to overseas medical employee. But here when we are going for personal accident insurance, uh, so first will be personal accident insurance. Okay, in personal accident insurance, the definition and the nomenclature itself suggest that the policy covers any bodily injury or death resulting solely and directly from accident caused by external violent and visible means and not aggravated by bodily defects or infirmity. Here, the important factor what we have to know is solely and directly from accident. So any remote cause or which is not direct, so any indirect thing, but when it leads to accident, it will not be covered. Again, all the means should be external, violent and visible means. So any internal injury, like many uh, customers or in your day-to-day -day, uh, working will come to you asking for the any of the illness or sickness treating it as an accident. Whether that is covered under personal accident policy? No, because what we cover is external, violent and visible means. So whatever accidents which will occur, which results in bodily injury or death, that should be external, violent and visible means. Secondly, although there are, uh, there may not be any loss of earning capacity, there still can be disablement under the policy. And lastly, but the most important for this personal accident insurance is, this is a fixed benefit policy and not policies of strict indemnity. Because in general insurance, what we deal in principle of indemnity, but yes, personal accident insurance policies are deviation from strict indemnity. 
they are called as fixed benefit policy what what is the fixed benefit policy or what are the benefits which are given under personal accident insurance policy that we will deal in the next slide now personal accident insurance policy the benefit charge what we cover actually under personal accident insurance policy is there are these type of coverages first death whenever any person is opting for personal accident insurance policy the coverage in case of death due to accident is 100% suppose a person has taken a policy for 10 lakhs of uh, coverage in case of accidental death the coverage will be 10 lakhs of rupees here the after the death of any person it will the benefit will go to the assignee this is uh, the simple thing. Uh, second benefit is loss of two limbs or two eyes or one limb and one eye. So here the difference is the personal accident permanent total disability. That is the fourth uh, coverage. This is also covered under second that is loss of two limbs or two eyes. But if suppose one limb and one eye is uh, per, uh, permanently damaged or it is not in use then the coverage will be 100 percent then the third option or the third coverage is loss of one limb or one eye so in second coverages it is written as one limb and one eye so in any accident if one limb and one eye is permanently damaged or it is not in use then 100% coverage is there. But if in accident, either one limb or one eye is totally lost, then the coverage is restricted to 50%. So when we are taking example of 10 lakhs of free, in the second cover, the person will get the 100% benefit, whereas in the third coverage, it will be restricted to 50%. Then the fourth coverage is permanent total disablement. What is permanent total disablement? A person is unable to come out of the injury and perform his duties or perform his work and then can have their earning. So in this case, when there is total incapacity, a person cannot do any work from which he can earn the thing. So in that case, it is called as permanent total disablement. So this permanent dis to total disablement coverage is full coverage that is 100%. So in our case, total 10 lakhs of sum insured is payable. Now the next coverage is permanent partial disablement. There are certain percentage as shown in the table of the policy right from your loss of years to loss of single thumb or any phalanges. So the percentage differ right from 5% up to 75%. So it differ as per the partial disability. But here please note that the partial disablement is permanent in any. So permanent in nature means the disablement is partial but it is complete. It is permanent in nature. There is no temporary disablement. The last one, the sixth coverage is temporary total disablement. Now what is temporary and total? So the difference is that the disablement is total for some period. The disablement is total, but it is for some period. So that total disablement for certain period is termed as temporary total disablement. What will be the example for this? A simple example of fracture in case of accident. So the fractures are the total disablement. Suppose a person is uh, fractured in accident and his right hand is fractured. So he is not in a position to use the hand for certain period, maybe four weeks, maybe six weeks. So this four weeks or six weeks 
is a temporary period but for that temporary period the disablement is total so this is termed as temporary total disablement and what will be the benefit for temporary total disablement these will be on weekly compensation basis what will be the weekly compensation basis it will be 1% of capital submitted so in our examination when uh, if any question is asked and 10 lakhs is the sum insured under table a so what will be the weekly compensation in case of four weeks disablement it will be 10000 per week so for four weeks it will be 40000 so 40000 claim is payable under temporary total disablement that is fracture due to accident so these are the coverages under personal accident insurance policy there are certain special features of this personal accident insurance policy the cover is for 24 hours and on worldwide basis please note personal accident policy is not restricted for indian territory only it is a worldwide cover and it is covered for 24 hours second one travel as a passenger in a licensed standard aircraft is automatically covered whenever a passenger is going by any standard type of aircraft what is standard type of aircraft that is a passenger aircraft so when a tra person is a passenger it is automatically covered under personal accident insurance policy medical expenses yes additional coverage will be there by paying extra premium war and allied perils working in foreign countries on civilian duties can be covered by way of loading of the premium so here in case of personal accident policy when we are going for the exclusion war and allied risks are excluded but the special feature is that whenever the or whenever any person is working in foreign entry foreign countries on a civilian duty those can be covered but by paying additional premium some special features are here also the cumulative bonus 5% maximum up to 50% the cumulative bonus can be earned subject to no claim for the particular year so whenever there is no claim the cumulative bonus is increased every year by percentage and the maximum cumulative bonus is 50% the next special feature is carriage of dead body that is allowed up to 2% of capital sum insured or 2500 whichever is less apart from these special features for the dependent children the education fund is also provided for one dependent child below 25 years age what are the coverages 10% of capital sum insured subject to maximum rupees 5000 if there are more than one dependent child then this is the coverage is up to 10000 the benefit is available for only on capital sum insured and not on cumulative bonus so here you can make out the difference what is capital sum insured and what is total sum insured whenever there is any claim suppose the claim is of death in case of accident and his capital sum insured is 10 lakh but the cumulative bonus is 50% so in case of death the coverage will be 15 lakhs 10 lakhs capital sum insured and 5 lakhs cumulative bonus as earned by the insured but when the percentage or the coverage is as a special feature in case of education fund the capital sum insured is only available for the benefit and cumulative bonus is not into 
consideration. Certain exclusions, compensation in respect of death, injury or disablement arising from. So here is the list of certain exclusion by way of which the claims will be repudiated. What are those? First one, intentional self-injury, attempted or suicide. So any intentional injury to the body is not covered. It is excluded. Second one, influence of intoxicating liquor or drug. Yes, it is not covered. Engaging in aviation. So what is engaging in aviation is that a person is driving an aircraft or when he is using aircraft as a pilot. So in that case, engaging in aviation means the activities which are involved for flying the aircraft. So the, those may be the crew members, maybe the pilot, maybe the co-pilot. So in these cases, personal accident policy will not come in picture. But if you are the passengers, yes, the 24 hours coverages, that to worldwide cover will be available. Any breach of law with criminal intent, any breach of law with criminal intent is not covered. But technical breaches, if any, of the law, those are not excluded. I have mentioned here traffic offenses or maybe some, uh, I am always giving an exam that in Mumbai local trains, while catching a local train, the person is moving from one platform to other platform by using rails. The person is not uh, going through rail over bridge. So in case of any accident on the rails while catching the train, in that cases, yes, it is a definite breach of law, but the intentional is not criminal. So in that case, the accidental claim, if any, will have to be paid. Service in armed forces, not covered. War and nuclear perils not covered from childbirth or pregnancy. So if any death or disability arises out of childbirth or pregnancy is excluded from the scope of law. Now, classic classification of risk. There are three types of risk group under personal accident insurance coverage. Risk groups are defined according to the nature of duties of the person. Risk group 1, risk group 2 and risk group 3. Risk group 1 is having minimum risk, whereas risk group 3 is having maximum of the risk. What are those risk groups 1, 2 and 3? Risk group 1 are basically the persons engaged in administrative functions. Those may be accountants, doctors, lawyers, architects, teachers. As I said earlier, persons, those are primarily engaged in administrative functions are classified under risk group one. Naturally, the premium will be lower. Risk group two, moderate group, the premium will be higher than the risk group one, but lower than the risk group two. So rating is devised as per the risk group and according to the nature of duties. Risk group two majorly are the manual labors or the persons who are in the manual working. Those are contractors, builders, drivers, veterinary doctors, professional athletes and sportsmen, woodworking machinists, persons engaged in manual labor. So these are risk group two people wherein the premium is moderate that is lower than the risk group 3 but more than the risk group 1. Then what will be the risk group 3 personnel? These are having maximum risk as considered to the insurer. So risk group 3 are jockeys, circus personnel, working in mines with explosives, mountaineering, winter sports and persons engaged in activities of similar hazard. There is a difference between risk group 2 and risk group 3 because in the risk group 2, 
I have mentioned professional athletes and sportsmen. So these professional athletes and sportsmen, according to the degree of hazard of their sports, those can be referred to risk group three also. So it it differs from their professional athleticism as well as the sports in what they are dealing with. This is the difference between risk group one, two, and three. Now, what are the major things to remember in case of personal accident policy uh, for your uh, examination point of view? The age limit, five years to 70 years. Risk groups are one, two, three. Those are for the rating factors. CSI is capital sum insured. PTT is permanent total disablement. PPD is permanent partial disablement. TTD is temporary total disablement. These are some of the abbreviations. Accident means what? External, violent and visible means. Those should be caused solely and directly. So if any injury is due to external, violent and visible means solely and directly, then it will be termed as accidental injury. Fixed benefit policy, yes, the policy is not strict contract of indemnity because it is a deviation from indemnity. So it is a fixed benefit policy. But here, why fixed nomenclature is uh, incorporated is that in case of any legal claim under third party policy, the coverage is unlimited coverages. But when we are termed it as unlimited coverages, still the amount will be arrived according to the dependency as well as their wages. Here, while issuing the policy, when any insurance company is issuing the policy, they will consider the income criteria of the person or his annual income, his or her annual income. And according to the annual income, the benefits will be given and once the benefits are given as a fixed benefit, the insurance company will give the compensation according to the policy sum insured. So here, these are not strict contract of indemnity. Worldwide cover and 24 hours also. Group personal accident policy, these are personal accident policy coverages but given in groups. The groups should have a common relationship. That common relationship may be between employer and employee, the club and their members. The, may, there will be many uh, uh, relationships wherein a common uh, organization or common uh, thing has to be established while taking the policy. So some common relationship among the person to be insured and there has to be a central point of administration. So whenever there is a central point of administration, like a company, like a club or any institution wherein the central point of administration is there and the people are under group taking the policy. So here, no insured person has an independent right of action. So in case of personal accident policy, that is the individual personal accident policy, the independent right of action is preserved. But here, the central point for administration, that is the company or the club or the institution is having the right of action against the insurer. The cumulative bonus, the education grant, these are not applicable in case of group personal accident policy. Medical expenses, war risk extension, those can be available by paying extra premium. Some insured can be linked to emolments or the income which is payable to the insured by the company or any uh, income when it is uh, established, then accordingly we can issue the policy. So these are some of the features of group personal accident insurance policy. The premium 
is dependent on profession or the activity involved in. Here in case of the administrative functions in a certain company, the premium will depend according to risk group one. But in the same company, if risk group two persons are to be covered, naturally the rate will be higher. So if the group is there, still according to their profession or the activities involved in, the premium is changed. There are certain on-duty covers as well as off-duty covers. So according to the on-duty or off-duty, the applicable premium will be reduced to certain percentage. Because when we are giving on-duty covers under group personal accident policy, the coverage is restricted for the person for any accident while they are on duty only. So in case of any accidental claim whilst on duty, the claim will be uh, given by the company. Same way for off-duty covers, the coverage is restricted when the person is off duty from his regular assignments. So here the percentage of applicable premium is also given. Exclusion of death cover, yes, this can be asked by the uh, central point of administration. That is any company may come to you for having good personal action policy, but excluding death cover. Why they will need this type of uh, exclusion? Because the group might have a life insurance policy in existence. So there the death is already covered and for reduction of the premium, they will require some discount from you. So in that case, they will come out with a proposal by having this feature of exclusion for death cover. Then the group discounts, yes, when the persons are more than 100, the group discounts are applicable. Any physical infirmity or defect. So suppose uh, any person having a pre-existing defect or disability prior to commencement of the cover, all these things or whatever are the disabilities will not be covered. So or any community effect as a result of such disability, these will be excluded. Flight insurance coupon, uh, these are different from our uh, individual personal accident policy in a way that passengers flight coupon provides cover for accidental bodily injury while embarking or disembarking from or traveling in any aircraft operated by a regular airline. So these flight insurance coupons are taken generally or the regular airlines, when they are in operation, they do take this type of insurance for their passengers. So they may be the operational airlines and they will take this policy or these flight insurance coupon for a particular, uh, particular uh, scheduled route only or maybe on a floater basis for total year also. So they will restrict themselves for a scheduled route or they may take for a specified period. So this is the option for them to take from fly, uh, flight insurance coupons from any insurance company. The cover can be for a specific flight because it may happen that certain flights they will take this flight insurance coupon for certain flights they will not take. So according to the degree of hazard, what the airline intends to take, they can take the policy. Not for a specific flight, they will take for a specific period of time. So according to the degree of hazard, the airlines may come to you for this insurance policy that is flight insurance coupon. The declaration policies are also available and these can be issued to individual or companies for frequent flyers because there are many frequent flyers using the same airline. So in case of those, the declaration policies can be issued. Student safety insurance. Student safety insurance, actually it is on the lines of personal accident insurance policy, 
but here the income is not the criteria because the students are not the earning members of the family but still we are allowing the accidental benefits in case of any injury due to accident in school premises maybe at the picnic or any excursion so this this is a basic coverage under student safety insurance policy these are available to whom these are available to schools college or educational institution benefits are given to the registered students only so the student has to be registered member of that particular educational institution the important factor to be noted here is that all the students are to be covered under that particular institution or the college or the school they cannot differentiate or they cannot bifurcate that they want the coverages only for the primary school children and for secondary and higher secondary they did they don't want any coverage so this bifurcation or choice is not allowed in case of student safety insurance so all students are to be covered additions are allowed but deletions are not so here the additional premium is always taken but in case of deletions refunds are not allowed so if the deletion is there insurance company may delete the student but the refunds are not allowed maintenance of attendance register yes the register is very important because this policy is covering all the student so they give they may give you the names or they may give you the number only so when any student or any accidental claim of any student comes to you the attendance register and the registration number of that particular student is very important claim amount payable to the parent guardian as recorded in the school registry because the claim amount is not paid to the student as they are the minors so here in case of any claim the claim is payable to the parent or the guardian the compensation limits this is only example given here it differs from company to company this was all about personal accident insurance policy we will now move on to burglary policy so in case of burglary policy the nomenclature here shown is burglary business premises policy so this policy covers any theft robbery dacoity when the premises are used for business purpose so a domestic house or the residential institute uh, any home is not covered under this policy so this policy is burglary insurance policy for business premises now what is burglary or burglary is defined as theft of property from the premises described following upon felonious entry of the said premises by violent and forcible means so here again the violent and forcible means has to be there and the entry should be felonious so what 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 do you mean by this burglary so there has to be a violent means a forcible means the entry has to be by way of any force in the business premises theft by a person in the premises who subsequently breaks out by violent and forcible means provided there shall be visible marks at the place of such entry or exit by tools or explosives or electricity or chemical so here when we are describing that the entry should be forcible it may happen i will give you one example in case of the business premises as a customer when a person is coming into your business premises he may be in the business premises hiding himself at any corner or whatever place and after closing of office hours 
if that owner goes out of that business premises, that person who is there in the business premises, he can take out all the valuable contents from the business premises and while going out of that business premises, he can use the force. So this force is at the time of exiting and not at the time of entry. So whether this is covered? Yes, this is also covered because the entry or exit is by way of violent and forcible means. But yes, the visible mars has to be there or it is to be established that the entry or exit is by violent and forcible means. The use of force and violence need not be against property only. It can be against any individual also. What we uh, come to know by this spread, suppose that person or that burglar may use the gun or any arm and he may take the possession of the key from the owner of that premises. So here there is not actually forcible entry wherein you can establish the force by way of physical marks. But though the visible marks are not appearing, the threat is given and this threat is by the use of force. And what is the use of force? That is use of any gun or any arm. So this is also termed as a forcible entry or exit. So here also the claim is payable. We need to understand what are the basic definition and coverages under policies of miscellaneous because this subject is a tricky one and we need to understand the basic nomenclature, the definition, the coverage as well as the exclusion. So you, you can very well answer logically and by applying your mind in your examination for miscellaneous and you can get a maximum marks. In case of burglary policy, discover contents of the business premises against risk of loss or damage by burglary and housebreaking only. Fire risk is covered by issue of a separate fire policy. Yes, in burglary, please note that no fire coverages are allowed. So in case of any fire, in case of any natural calamities, if the contents are lost, those are not covered under burglary policy. The property insured is covered only if loss or damage takes place whilst contained in the premises described in the schedule. This is as good as our fire location based policy. So here the location is very important. The address, pin code and the geographical area is very well this has to be described from the by the insured because in case of any claim the location under the policy is only covered not the registered address what are the properties covered yes basic property what insured wants to cover is stock in trade so apart from the stock what are the other properties which can be covered by the insured AR, goods in trust or con on commission for which the insured is responsible. Now, what are the goods in trust or on commission or on job work? A simple example, when you are giving any clothes to a tailor and tailor is giving you the ready-made shirt and pant after stitching, whatever goods you have given to the tailor are in trust or on commission or on job work with the tailor. So in case of any burglary in the tailor's premises, the goods are not actually the property of the tailor, but it is in trust or on commission and those losses are also covered. Cash and currencies, yes, those are covered if they are locked in safe. Fixtures and fittings, tools of trade, those are also covered as a property. Loss or damage to any part of the building caused by burglary or any item, therefore, is also covered. So, 
when we are taking the burglary policy the problem always comes in case of building claims because we also tend to convey to the insured that you cover only the stock or the goods which are in trust or commission because we know that there will not be any building portion which will be taken away from the uh, thief or the burglar but here in case of damage to the building that too by burglary or attempt of the burglary that is also covered under the burglary policy so here what is important and when you are going through the proposal form also you might have come across a question in your mind that why the building portion is described in burglary proposal form this is because if there is any loss or damage to any part of the building because of the burglary or attempt of the burglary those can be reinstated those can be covered by taking the property coverage of burglary of building under burglary policy so these are the property so a question may come in miscellaneous examination that building of 10 lakhs insured wants to cover under burglary policy whether it is covered if there is any damage what will be the claim payable so here you should basically know that the building also can be covered as a property in burglary policy these are certain definitions for section of under ipc for house breaking section 445 of indian penal code robbery under theft section 378 under robbery section 390 dacoity 391 burglary hold up so these are all part of burglary only but according to the degree of hazard or according to the number of persons who are involved in burglary the definitions are changed so as the aggravations goes on and on the definition of burglary is changed according to the severity the definitions are changed so what are theft it is a dishonesty dishonestly taking away move immovable property out of the possession of the person without consent of that person that comes under section 378 of ipc this is nothing but burglary but this is dishonestly taking away movable property so in case of burglary theft is add on cover theft is not covered under burglary policy it is add on cover you have to pay extra premium and if it is covered specifically then only the theft claims are payable burglary taking and carrying of property from premises by way of as we discussed entry or exit by forcible means and that to violent way the presence of visible marks at the place of entry has to be there now robbery in case of robbery voluntary causing to any person death or hurt so there is intentional hurting or intentional injury by wrongful way and there is a fear of death or hurting to the person and this fear will be the forcible way so the robbery is fear for instant death or hurt by the robber or the burglar when he is entering or exiting he will use the arms so in case of this type of burglary it is termed as robbery house breaking yes this is again part of burglary only wherein committing house trespass part by effecting entrance into the house all already being in the house house means the business premises for the purpose of committing an offence dacoity when there are five or more than five person which are armed or otherwise those may be armed may be unarmed 
but when the number of persons are five or more, it is termed as dacoity. So it is a joint uh, attempt to commit a robbery. It is called as dacoity. Larceny, theft committed by a person who has got a right to be in the premises. Larceny is not covered under burglary policy. This is the important point what we should know in examination point of view as well as our day-to-day -day working because the larceny is uh, theft committed by a person who has got a right to be in the premises. That is, the customer may come into your premises or any legal person who is coming to your premises and he has taken away some property by without your knowledge then this is termed as larceny though it is theft it is not covered under our burglary policy hold up hold up is nothing but a burglary only or theft but it is accompanied by assault or violence so this violence or assault is by threat threat given to the insured or it may be the to the employees of the insured whether it is possible visible means or not so this is basically a forcible entry when the assault is there or violence entry is there so threat is also termed as the forcible entry or exit key clause the loss of cash from the safe following the use of key and use of that keys or the duplicate thereof. So in case of loss by use of these type of keys, unless it is the such keys has been obtained by violence or threat or through means of force. Here the why the key clause is introduced is because whenever the keys are used by any person, uh, unlawful person and he is committing theft the question of use of key will come in picture so in case the keys are still with the landlord or the insured the use of keys by way of wrongful means the duplicate or it may occur that the impression of that keys might have been taken by those burglar and those keys are used for such type of robbery or burglary. So this key clause is very important. So this, these keys has to be obtained by violence or threat. Suppose the keys are taken by the unlawful person by mischievous thing or the keys are being misplaced by that insured person. In these cases, whenever the keys are misplaced and the use of keys for any burglary, then this key clause will come in picture and the claim is not payable. But yes, if the keys are obtained by violence or threat or any means of force and the use of such keys can be done for having or for doing the burglary. So in these cases, key clause is very important. The key clause cannot be deleted even by payment of extra premium. So even by payment of extra premium, the key clause will not be deleted. A complete record of cash. Yes, in case of theft or the burglary of cash, there has to be a complete record. Basically, we need to understand that burglary policy is to be given to your valued customer or the customers who are on your books from years. The moral hazard is very important in case of all the policies which are related to burglary and theft. The moral hazard is key factor in these type of policies. The complete record of cash has to be there. Accordingly, the keys of the safe or strong room shall not be left on the premises after business hour. These are the features of key clause. And if the keys are left 
on the bridge business premise after business hour and the use of keys are done by the uh, by that thief then then in that case the key clause will come in picture and the claims will not be payable because there will not be the forcible way to have the keys by that unlawful person what are the properties which are excluded under burglary policy gold or silver articles watches or jewelry or precious stones deeds bond bill of these are certain properties which is uh, shown in the ppt those are excluded under burglary policy but yes if the insurer is covering and it is specifically mentioned on the schedule of the policy those can be covered perils covered what are the perils covered as we have already discussed there has to be a burglary or house breaking by use of force so there has to be entry or exit by violent and forcible means theft by a person in the premises who subsequently breaks out by violent forcible means though that is also covered damage to the premises by the burglars failing to be made good by the insured yes damage to the premises is also covered what are the exclusions any inmate or insured family members or business staff when they are involved as a principal or accessory so if there is any collision between the business staff and that particular thief or the burglar so those will be excluded by acts of persons lawfully on the premises that is as i already described the customers or the lawfully engaged persons or, or lawfully entrant of the of the premises so any acts done by this person it is termed as larceny only that is not covered consequent upon fire or explosion so in case of any burglary after fire or after any explosion those burglary or those contents which are lost due to burglary after fire will not be covered under burglary policy in fire policy a separate condition and the separate clause is already there loss of cash from the safe following the use of key or duplicate unless such key is obtained by threats or violence this is key clause certain exclusions are yes apart from fire and explosions uh, fire and explosions earthquake and other natural perils in case of any burglary after natural perils those are excluded in case of riot strike and civil commotion those are excluded but yes after taking extra premium we cover srcc that is riot strike and civil commotion war and kindred perils nuclear risk those are excluded from the scope of burglary policy premises left uninhabited by day and night for seven or more consecutive days and nights here this is very important exclusion in case of premises which are left uninhabited that there are no visible mass or there are no any persons engaged in the business premises for consecutively for seven or more days and nights and if any burglary takes place those will be excluded the conditions indemnity yes this policy is policy of indemnity in case of personal accident policy those were deviations from indemnity extent of intrinsic value of the property loss subject to some insured repair damage to property or premises insured so these are contracts of indemnity and the conditions of pro rata average subrogation contribution 
these will apply in case of all the claims fraudulent claim arbitration and disclaimer cancellation yes these are certain condition to be followed in case of burglary policy condition of pro rata average we all know in general terms it is called as under insurance subrogation yes the right of recovery is prejudice that is right of recovery will be pass on to the uh, claimant in case of a claim paid that is the insurer is having the right of recovery once the claim is paid under this condition of subrogation in case of contribution yes if there are more than one policy the contribution principle will apply fraudulent claim if the claims are fraudulent those will not be payable arbitration if there is any dispute in case of quantum unless and until the admissibility is accepted by the insurer then this arbitration clause will come in picture cancellation yes on short period scale if insured is opting on pro rata basis if insurer is opting these are certain conditions of burglary policy reinstatement of some insured yes like our fire insurance the reinstatement of some insured by payment of extra premium will be allowed here in burglary policy also special features average clause we have already dealt in insurance must be effected for the full value of property to be insured unless first loss basis is underwritten so what is first loss basis that will deal in next slide the probable highest amount at risk at any one time should be declared so here what is the sum insured it is the highest amount at risk at any one time to be declared within 365 days this is sum insured under burglary policy the rating will depend on certain parameters as i already described you the burglary policy is to be given to valued customer having or we have to deal with the moral hazard of the insured when the person or the insured is good in moral hazard then in that case the rating will be given and the discount will be given it is a non tariff business premium rates depends upon the client as i already described you regarding the moral hazard the situation of the risk what is situation of the risk the business premise says in the remote area wherein the locality is very remote or thin in those situation the risk of burglary is more so the situation is also one of the basic rating factor in burglary policy the property to be covered yes the property of high value but which are very thin or uh, those can be bundled in very small place those are having high risk and the rating will be more but if suppose the property is in loose and it is in huge quantity or the property is having higher weight one cannot lift the property by two or three person at a single point those are the good risk and the rating pattern will be lower the premium will be less precautions for protection nowadays the business premises are protected with cctv camera then there are uh, many burglar alarms and those are linked with the nearest of the police station so these are some of the precaution the basic precaution of 24 hours security guard the watchman these are the basic precaution which we have to consider while issuing such type of burglary policy the rating yes as the protection or the precautions of for protection are more 
the discounts will be offered. Previous claims experience, we have to analyze the previous claims experience for that particular location and the particular policy. And if the claims are already there for that particular premises or within those areas, we have to be very strict and we have to lower the premium. Higher or lower rates may be charged and protective measures has to be imposed if felt necessary. These are the rating patterns in case of burglary policy. Reduce rate for stocks in bulk with large sum insured. Increase rate where chances of major loss is very remote in single incidents. Cash valuables in burglary proof safe. Now the first loss basis, 90%, 50% or declaration policy. What are these policies under burglary policy? We'll come and we'll discuss in our next slides. The underwriting consideration. What are the underwriting consideration? Moral hazard of the proposer is very important in burglary policy. So all the policies of burglary, money insurance, all risks, these policies are very important for consideration of moral hazard of the insured. Survey of the risk. Yes, the situation of the risk is very important in case of burglary policy. Maintaining of books of accounts, moral hazard. Regular stock taking and audit once in a year, at least once in a year, the audit has to be carried out. So regular stock taking is key in case of burglary policy. Avoiding or loading of the premium for small articles with high values. So whenever the articles are small, but having high values, basically we have to avoid issuing policies or we may load the premium. Correct description of goods, Separate sum insured for stock, cash, goods held in trust. So in our burglary policy proposal form, you have to mention or insured has to mention separate sum insured for stock, stock held in trust, the cash, furniture fixture fitting, the building portion. So a separate sum insured is very important underwriting consideration for burglary policy. Details of safe, its weight, size, make, etc. These are important underwriting consideration if the proposal is for cash in safe. Separate fire insurance of property is a must. So unless until we have the fire insurance policy of that particular customer, we are not issuing burglary policy. The cover is restricted to cash money in safe and not in steel almira or cash box. So generally the PT cash box or the steel almira for these type of uh, you know, things, if the cash and money are kept, we are avoiding to give the coverages. All the endorsement warranties, those are to be attached. Now here, we will deal in some type of policies of burglary. What are those? First is full value policy. As we have already dealt in that burglary policies are contracts of indemnity. So the sum insured has to be full. There should not be any under insurance because in case of any claim, the average clause will apply. So full value policies are those. The insurance must be effected for the full value of the property to be insured. These may be on non-declaration basis, may be on declaration basis. Now, first loss policy. What are the first loss policy? These policies may be issued for an amount less than the total value of the property with the stipulation that the company will pay the whole amount of loss up to the limit of some insured. That is, 
the insured will choose what amount of loss he may incur and the total loss is a remote possibility the first loss policy acceptance should be considered in case of large warehouse and stores where value of stock is very considerable and of substantial may be bulky in nature rendering total loss a remote possibility the example is given the machinery or the bed goods damage to the premises must be excluded in such policy so here the damage to the premises as an additional coverages has to be excluded what will be the rating factor and the percentage of the premium to be charged for first loss policies we need to understand basically what is full value policy and what is first loss policy full value policy in case of stock of 1 crore insured will take sum insured as 1 crore but suppose if the sum insured is to be restricted for 25% of the full value cover because the insured is sure that total loss is remote or it will not happen at all so in case of that insured will come to you opting for 25% of the coverage only and not for the 100% so what will be the underwriting consideration in case of first loss policy of 25% of full value cover we have to charge premium of 50% so here when we are having example of 1 crore sum insured as a full value and when first first loss policy is taken by the insured what will be the sum insured or the liability the liability will be restricted to 25 lakhs and not 1 crore suppose the premium for total value of 1 crore is 10000 in case of first loss policy of 25% full value cover the premium will be 5000 we are taking the liability of 25 lakhs and we are restricting the premium to 50% and the accord accordingly the premium charging will vary according to the percentage of full value cover for 50% it will be 70% of the premium for 65% of the liability 85% will be charging of the premium on full value cover 75% 90% premium so basically first loss policy are to be given if the total loss is remote insurer will also analyze if there is any total loss which is possible we are not issuing first loss policies declaration basis the declaration ba uh, basis policies are also full value policy the declaration may be simple declaration policies may be the floater declaration policy the policies may be considered where large stocks which fluctuate considerably during the year and a single sum insured is difficult to ascertain at the time of inception of the policy so here on the lines of fire declaration policy burglary declaration policies are issued the probable highest sum insured at any one time during the period it is taken as the sum insured of the policy 100% premium is to be taken and it is to be taken at the inception of the policy the refund is possible by arriving at the sum insured after having all the declarations from the insured and usually 50% of the provisional policy premium is at least retained so as discussed with you suppose 10000 is the premium 
and the policy issued is declaration policy the minimum premium to be retained will be 5000 rupees so over and above 5000 will be payable as a refund after arriving at the sum insured floating policy yes in case of burglary we can issue the floating policy because the cover uh, this this cover is given for the goods in more than one location under one sum insured the subject matter of insured has to be identical in all location what do you mean by subject matter of insurance and it has to be identical a textile businessman when he is opting for floating policy the stock which is stored in the godowns of mumbai delhi hyderabad chennai has to be of textile goods only he cannot have the stock other than the textile goods because the subject matter of insurance has to be identical and those are to be identical in all location policies are issued when sum insured when separate sum insured is not available if separate sum insured is available he can very well take full value policy on location specific basis they are issued only to well known clients yes this moral hazard is very important in case of floaters that is floating policy some percentage extra premium has to be taken valued policies in case of burglary we have already discussed that certain properties will be excluded like the cash the jewelry the paintings antiques so these are not covered in our burglary policy but suppose if, if the insured and the insurer they are agreed on certain terms then these type of valued policies under burglary clause can be issued these will be issued for paintings pictures curios antiques inventory and valuation clause we have already discussed the policy is to be given to the businessman who is having good moral hazard so in case of inventory the records has to be full proof and if there is any losses while taking inventory those are not covered under the policy so this is very important clause in burglary policy or in any of the money involved policy risks to be avoided which are the risk which the insurer has to avoid there is situated in the interior or the remote places those are to be avoided because the degree of hazard the risk is more jewelers we are issuing separate jewelers blocks policies and burglary policies are to be avoided dealers in precious stones watchmakers goldsmith silversmith furious money lenders or these are certain risks which insurance company tend to avoid for issuance of policy certain documents for claim procedure it is given the completed claim form inform first information report final investigation report the survey or the investigation report from the insurer side is also a key and major factor then letter of undertaking that is subrogation other policies of burglary are what we deal where the policies of burglary business premises we can issue burglary for private dwellings also <clears throat> parent set clause all risk insurance policy baggage these are certain other policies of burglary insurance baggage insurance we will quickly go to some of the policies which are very important in miscellaneous and according to your 
examination point of view. Loss of or damage to personal baggage in connection or baggage which are connection with trade. What is baggage insurance? It is loss or damage to personal baggage or the baggages which are connection with trade anywhere in India. So these baggages may be lost in transit by way of burglary, theft or any type of misfortune. So here we can cover these type of baggage under baggage insurance. Now, what is difference between baggage insurance and actually transit insurance for the stock? The baggage insurance, certain specific exclusion, when we will deal with this type of exclusion, you will very well understand the difference. The specific exclusion while occurring during routine travel is excluded. When the insured is moving from his home and up to his office work or his work of routine, this is called as routine travel. So whatever are the damages or theft occurred during this routine travel for the baggages are excluded. So the travel has to be other than the routine travel. Then the next exclusion is to articles which did not form part of the baggage when the journey commenced unless declared and accepted by the company. So in case of baggage insurance, the articles or the stock in our general terms has to be specified by that person who is taking the insurance. To articles of consumable and perishable in nature, those will not be covered. So those which can be consumed by the insured in journey or the items which are perishable in nature will not be covered under baggage insurance. So baggage has to be a accompanied baggage and apart from the accompanied baggage, the articles are to be described while or at the time of taking the insurance. Loss of articles like sticks, the umbrellas, those are not covered because these are easily uh, damaged or these are the easily easy items that can be stolen. So in case of baggage, we are not covering sticks and umbrellas. Apart from that, uh, that many of the cameras or your handy cams, those are also not covered. Property in use on voyage or journey. So the property which is in use at the time of journey, that is the next uh, so number six is articles or clothes while being worn or carried out. Those are excluded because that is not part of the baggage insurance. Arising from leakage, spilling of liquids, oils, etc. Those are not, those are not covered under baggage insurance. The other exclusions are the same as under all risk policies. Other conditions, there are certain conditions under baggage insurance policy. This PPT will be shared to you and you can very well go through the details. Since the cover is valid during the journey, the loss can take place anywhere within the geographical area covered. So in case of baggage insurance, the insured has to specify the area covered or he has to specify the journey destination. Unless and until he specifies the journey the baggage insurance will not come in force. Now we will come to money insurance. Money insurance is very important in miscellaneous insurance. As I already conveyed you that burglary policy, 
all risk policy, money insurance policy. These are all policies wherein good moral hazard of the insured is a key factor. So what we cover in money insurance, it is the loss of money in transit by the insured or the employees, the employees who are engaged by the insured. Loss by robbery, theft, hold up, whilst in insured premises or strong room. So money insurance is not only loss of money in transit, but loss of money whilst in the insured premises or, or if the money is kept in strong room after the business hours. So what are the coverages or what is the property under money? Those are the cash, bank draft, currency note, postal orders, postage stamps, etc. So here the insured has to declare what type of money he wants to insure. Wages, unpaid salaries are covered against burglary provided those are retained in the strong room. Money insurance, as I already described, the section one will cover money in transit, section two will cover money in sale. Money in transit is transit of the money, cash, between insured premises and bank or specified place. So here again, the insured has to specify the location in which the money will travel. In case of money in safe, it has to be locked in safe and normally for 48 hours or 72 hours. Cash in transit insurance, yes, this is a publicly known insurance. It is called as cash in transit. It is nothing but money insurance only. In case of money insurance, the two amounts are to be specified by the insured. What are, what are those two amounts? One is the limit of liability at any one loss and estimate amount of money in transit during the year. So in case of money insurance, the estimated amount in transit during the year will be termed as the sum insured. Whereas the limit of liability at any one loss will be the basic liability which insurance company is taking at any one transit. So here we need to understand the AOA and AOY concept. The limit of insurer liability for any one loss has to be specified and the estimate amount in transit during the year has to be specified. Suppose that businessman is having money transit in a year of 1 crore, but at any one point of time, the maximum amount of cash or money in transit is say 5 lakhs. So what will be the liability of insurance company in case of single claim. In case of any claim, the liability is not 1 crore, but it is maximum 5 lakhs. This is a concept of AOA, AOI limit. So limit of insurer's liability at any one loss and estimate amount in transit during the year, which is sum insured. The rating factor will be on the sum insured, that is estimated amount in transit during the year. Declaration policy can be issued and premium will be adjusted on the renewal. Insured will have to keep records of all the money transactions that are carried on involving various transits. Exclusions, these are very important factors. Shortage due to error or omission, not covered. Loss of money entrusted to any person other than insured or his authorized employees, not covered. 
losses due to fraud dishonesty of an employee those are again not covered loss occurring on the premises after business hours unless the money is kept in lock safe or strong so these are certain exclusion again loss by riot and strike terrorist activity those are excluded but by paying extra premium we can cover this riot strike exclusion theft of money from unattended vehicle uh, many claims may come out of this uh, uh, particular uh, definition because theft of money from unattended vehicles it is it is not covered so if the money is kept in vehicle and if it is attended by any person then only those claims will be payable again the forcible violent visible thing is a key factor loss from safe by we by use of its key unless the key is obtained by use of threat or violence this is again the key clause unless and until the keys are obtained by threat or by forcible means the coverages will not be there extension under the policy infidelity of the employees can be covered right strike terrorism yes can be covered by paying extra premium disbursement risk what is disbursement risk in case of salary or wages disbursement in case of business premises there may be a burglary robbery or dacoity so in that case since the money is not kept in the safe as well as not at the counter still you can cover the disbursement risk so this disbursement risk is actually loss of money by forcible means at the time of disbursement of the money within the business premises money in safe we have already discussed money at business counter so the difference between money in safe and money at business counter is that during the business hours the money is kept at the counter counter does not mean on the table it is kept inside the drawers or maybe in a pity cash box during the business hours so money if it is lost by way of burglary by way of forcible entry when the business hours are going on those are also covered provided extra premium is paid but after business hours sir the money kept in such drawers or pity cash box are not covered the money kept in safe after business hours are covered by way of extra premium payment from the insured these are some of the extension under money, money policy now fidelity guarantee we have already discussing about any infidelity of the workman or the employee so what is difference between that fidelity infidelity and what are the definition in simple terms to understand fidelity it is faithfulness or loyalty infidelity is unfaithfulness or cheating so in case of any infidelity or cheating from the employee there may be loss to the insured can the insured cover such kind of infidelity or cheating of the employee yes he can cover such type of infidelity under fidelity guarantee insurance policy what will be the coverages the fidelity guarantee there has to be a direct pecuniary loss sustained due to fraud dishonesty committed by the employee but this dishonesty or fraud has to be 
committed by the employee during the uninterrupted continuance of employment so the employee has to be in the employment in uninterrupted way so continuity of the employment is a key factor in fidelity guarantee insurance policy the limit of compensation is the specified sum insured loss due to bad accountancy is not covered as also certain omissions are also not covered so as we described earlier in case of burglary if any loss at the time of inventory checking is not covered here in case of fidelity guarantee insurance policy any act out of omissions are also not covered act should be committed in the course of duty that is the uninterrupted continuance of employment time limit for discovery of losses this is called as period of discovery the customary time limit provided is that the act or the acts insured against should be first discovered not later than 12 months after the resignation dismissal retirement or death of the employee or not later than 12 months after the termination of the policy whichever be the earlier this is very important period of discovery wherein it states that the discovery should not be later than 12 months after resignation dismissal retirement or death of the employee that means discovery of any infidelity should be before 12 months after resignation or dismissal or retirement or not later than 12 months after termination of the policy so after the expiry of policy if 12 months are over then the claim will not be payable so either or either the first section or second section whichever is earlier is to be considered as period of discovery in case of fidelity guarantee claim this is very important period of discovery for our examination point of view application of precautions control measures supervision of the employee these are some of the important things to understand in case of fidelity guarantee policy immediate notice of claims yes in case of all money policies like burglary all risk fidelity guarantee cash in transit policy immediate notice of claim is very important immediate notice to the police authorities is very important after some time if the intimation is given or certain period is already lapsed in those cases the claims will not be payable subsequent to the loss the policy stands cancelled this is very important in case of fidelity guarantee policy the loss after the loss the policy stand cancelled in respect of that defaulting employee we are not covering that defaulting employee afterwards subrogation yes after settlement of the claim the insurers can exercise all the rights of action against the employee in the name of the employer but at the cost of the insurer themselves contribution again the same principle termination of policy is very important arbitration yes if there is any dispute in case of amount then the arbitrators will come in picture fidelity by guarantee policy are certain in nature basically individual fidelity guarantee policy is issue by having individual fidelity guarantee insurance policy we are 
taking the description in case of name age what is the period of service that particular employee is in the service and accordingly what is the position of that particular individual after having all the aspects under the consideration the underwriting of the policy is done but apart from the individual fidelity guarantee policy we can issue collective policy also floating policies can also be issued and what are the floating policies specified sum of guarantee what is sum of guarantee it is the sum insured or the limit of liability so specified sum of guarantee is floated over the whole group so the claim in respect of one employee will reduce the sum insured unless the original sum insured is reinstated by paying an extra premium so here the principle of floater will come in picture a single sum insured or the sum of guarantee is floated amongst all the employees and in case of one claim the amount will be reduced to certain um, amount which is the claim but it again can be reinstated by paying an extra premium but as already we have described that the policy has to be cancelled here we are not cancelling the policy but the defaulting employee is deleted from such floating policies then the position policy what will be the position policies here particular name of that individual or his credentials are not established but a position is guaranteed so according to the position the specified amount are fixed uh, while taking the policy by the insured because the persons who are engaged in the certain positions may be changed may be transferred from that particular office to certain other office so in those cases every time it is a difficulty for the insured to inform insurer regarding change but their positions are fixed suppose in case of bank the cashier or the persons who are engaged in money issuing or taking so the positions are fixed but the individuals will be transferred so in that case every time the bank need not inform the insurance company but the position is guaranteed and according to the position according to the number of persons in that position we can issue the policy so position is guaranteed for a specified specified amount and a change in person holding the position does not affect the cover the blanket policy basically the nomenclature itself suggests that blanket policy will be issued if the number of persons engaged by the insurer insured um, company will be in large numbers say for example in our case that is if new india insurance company wants to have a fidelity guarantee insurance policy they will opt blanket policy so a blanket policy will cover the entire staff without showing name position but the references only must be made available to the insurer in the event of a claim a blanket policy will be issued if the number of persons engaged in the particular employment will be in large capacity so the if the numbers are less we are not issuing such type of policies but we can issue floating policy as well as the position policy but in case of blanket policy the number of person has to be in large capacity so here the fidelity guarantee has certain policies and according to the nature of the business the 
your insured may take the different policy. These are some of the miscellaneous policy as described in first uh, session, what we are covering. We may cover the second session also because, but still we are short of time. We will take certain policies as well as liability insurance in our next session, that is tomorrow's session. So if any Buddy is having any question, you may ask because there are certain 5-10 minutes still left. Yes. Sir. Yes. In PA policies, you have described the weekly compensation cover. That is 1% of the sum insured and maximum up to 104 weeks. Okay. Yeah. But yes, some, uh, yeah. in many places, it has been written one, only 100 weeks. Mm -hmm. So what would be the answer if questions come regarding this uh, weekly compensation? And both options are there, 100 and 104. See, basically, in case of, just I will take this. It's a first or second book. In case of temporary total disablement, the weekly compensation is at the rate 1% of the capital sum insured subject to maximum 104 weeks. Yes, Here, sir. the 104 weeks is given according to the number of years because we are taking two years uh, salary or two years coverages in case of weekly compensation. So while arriving at the sum insured, we are taking the coverages of six years annual income. But this is not the fixed criteria. The criteria for arriving at the sum insured may differ. So accordingly, 1% of capital sum insured will be the weekly compensation benefit. So this weekly compensation benefit when it comes to 100 weeks and if the 100 weeks are over and if the, our capital sum insured is exhausted, then those 104 weeks will not come in picture. In case of our answer in examination, our answer should be 104 weeks, though the claim will be payable up to 100 weeks because the capital sum insured is going to exhaust. Yes. The ideal answer as per our books will be 104 weeks. Okay. Okay. So uh, we will conclude yes. for today's session. Tomorrow we will be dealing in some policies of miscellaneous insurance and some policies of liability insurance. So thank nice. you today. Sir, one more question. Sir, one, more, sir, one more question. Uh, in business, uh, uh, business burglary policy, business premises, theft uh -huh. is excluded. Uh, then in burglary, private dwellings, is it uh, inbuilt cover or it is also add-on cover? In case of? Uh, burglary, private dwellings, means dwellings, uh, is it a theft is add-on cover or it is an inbuilt cover? In case of dwelling, that is burglary. If you are taking burglary insurance policy, the dwellings also will attract the same coverages as per burglary business premises policy. But in case of certain other policies like householders insurance, then in that case, yes, the theft is inbuilt cover. So if the burglary policy is there for the private dwelling, the coverages are as per burglary policy. But if you do tend to take householder's policy, then the theft will be inbuilt cover and not add-on cover. Maybe tomorrow's lecture, we will deal in uh, shopkeepers as well as the householder's policy. In the money policy, sir, theft is covered or not? In the money policy? In case of money policy. Yes. Money policy also the forcible way and the uh, violent visible means are the key factor 
and then only the cash in transit or money in transit are covered so no theft is covered in case of money policies also if insurers are issuing any theft coverages those will be the add on covers larceny is totally excluded by paying extra premium also we are not issuing coverages for larceny sir difference between a larceny and the theft that i already described larceny is nothing but a theft but it is done by the persons who are lawfully entering in the premises and in case of such type of theft how the larceny is occurred the insured or the employees they don't have the attention when that particular person is lifting the article from that particular shop or the business premises so this is not actual forcible entry or forcible exit but this is nothing but the theft only but it is termed as larceny so here the important factor of attention of the insured or maybe the employees has to be there this may be termed in other way that the negligence of the insured or negligence of the employees of the insured imparting the theft of that particular article which is termed as larceny so negligence is not covered and accordingly the larceny is not payable sir sir one more question sir sir, sir off duty sir. hello 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 sir uh, on duty and off duty cover is uh, for both the policies individual and no. group also the personal accident policy for group only the on duty or off duty covers are available individual personal accident policy there are no on duty or off duty covers those are only for group personal accident insurance policy sir one more thing sir yeah. here uh, education grant yeah in pi it is 2500 you have told that it is yeah. uh, it is a change it to 5000 or 2000 yeah it, it is it is changed see basically in your examination if there is any dispute between the amount or the quantums those questions will not be asked okay. right. if there is any like you have already asked about 100 weeks or 104 week uh, i am of the opinion this such type of question may not be asked because the questions which are uh, asked in the examination will be of uh, application of your mind in case of any claim in case of any policy coverages those will be very important factors sir uh, like the chapter 2 jan arogya bima yojana bhavishya yeah. arogya this type of policies may ask See, those policy yeah yeah in case of the policies which are existing in our day to day working as well as those policies which are now not in working but still in case of bhavishya arogya policy the claims payable are now affecting so the questions may be are so according uh, to the miscellaneous uh, nature of this uh, particular subject any question may be asked but you have to be thorough about the basic concept of the products and you should know the logical answers and which will fit perfectly from the given option so you need not have to go for uh, very far in nature you have to apply your mind and stick to the options which are given after the question so please read the question at the inception thoroughly after reading thoroughly then only click on the your uh, any of the option okay so now it is uh, Time we'll to conclude now. Close. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I think sir has to go home also. He is conducting lecture from his office, and he has to travel yeah. almost one and a half hour. Right, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Oh. So I think we'll have to uh, allow sir to leave now, and tomorrow yeah. we'll yes, continue with the same lecture. And uh, thank you very much, Kaushik sir, for your uh, yes. uh, elaborate um, uh, guidance on this miscellaneous subject. 
and yes, uh, thank we'll you. continue tomorrow thank you thank you so much sir thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so much sir yeah kaustub sir हेलो कौस्तुभ सर हाँ हेलो हाँ तुम्हारा मीटिंग एंड करावी लगे